What's up, humans? And welcome to a new Psicoactivo. Okay, as we wait for the Skywatcher event to take place, the second episode, there's a couple of things that I want to talk to you guys about. And I know that this is a generally like a UFO themed cha channel. Sometimes I talk about ancient civilizations. Sometimes I talk about consciousness. I would say that it's more a consciousness uh, studies kind of channel, but it's all really connected. And one of the most sensitive topics around has to do with the human capability of creating new life. And this CRISPR, CRISPR Cas9 newly found or rediscovered technique that has to do with gene editing and potentially bringing back old species. And what do you know? There is a concerted effort that just dropped today on Monday, April 7th, that will be known uh, in history as a before and after kind of moment. Because uh, to me, this is just as big as, for example, things like the internet being born or similar, very, very, very uh, consequential moments in time and in history. Uh, we could also think about how the atom was split in 1945, stuff like that. So let me introduce you to Romulus and Remus. This is from the Colossal Biosciences Corporation, and they just released a multi-media uh, um, announcement. Uh, they made a, a, a podcast with Joe Rogan, the CEO of that company, Ben Lam, made a podcast with Joe Rogan announcing what they just achieved. They released a Time Magazine full article and full investigation into what they just did. And just to not beat around the bush anymore, they just brought back a species of wolves that had been extinct for at least... 10,000 years. I'm talking about the mythical dire wolf. Yeah, the same ones from the Game of Thrones. Fun fact, Game of Thrones creator, uh, Mr. Martin, is actually an investor at this company. And uh, also Peter Jackson, the Lord of the Rings uh, director, is also uh, an investor in this company. And Peter Jackson managed to get a uh, picture of the two little dire wolves and on the game of thrones uh iron throne because he had just purchased it when these little guys were born and he decided to lend them the throne so they can be photographed like that and it was pretty epic i'm going to show you the picture in a little bit but first let me show you this video over 10,000 years ago a howl was lost to time But today it returns. Meet Remus and Romulus, the first two dire wolves since the Pleistocene era. So that right there, what you heard, is the very first dire wolf howl that has ever been heard in the last at least 10,000 years. That's pretty amazing. And a little bit creepy because we're going to get into more of the philosophical and creationist kind of debates that are going on right now. Um, but let's continue with this. At just 15 days old, the pups take their first wobbly steps before a much needed nap time. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's like, I don't know. It's really weird because I, I read the article um, on time. They didn't exactly bring back that same species. They use various types of DNA, ancient DNA, and then they managed to get to a certain percentage where they felt confident that they were going to come out healthy and all that. And so far, look at this. Three months in, the pups begin socialization, a key phase in their development. Weaning starts gradually, while play sharpens their instincts and strengthens their bonds. That's wild, man. That's 
We're witnessing and history with a right here. Growing teeth, chewing is serious business. Antlers and sticks help keep their fangs fit and strengthen their bones. Look at that. That's beautiful. At five months, a new instinct awakens. So this is how they are presumably right now. And that's why they wanted to wait a little bit because they wanted to show you guys and they're not fully grown yet. They're between five and six months old. They stop uh, uh, growing until their 14th month, which is two months after uh, their first year of life. Uh, but look at these. The pups begin to sense structure, challenge one another, and learn the rules of the pack. Look at that. This stage is marked by rapid growth and an emerging awareness of social hierarchy. Tussles, tackles, and toothy grins. Roughhousing may look like play, but it's serious practice for life in the pack. Wow. Look at that shot. Holy hell. Okay. But wait, there's more. Meet Khaleesi, the first female diary. They named one Khaleesi. Obviously, in the name of the mother of dragons, but also like a nod to uh, Mr. Martin, who is an investor here. Uh, but they have two males and one female. And the female is slightly younger. She's like uh, two or three months old right now. Dire wolf brought back from extinction. She may be small now, but she's destined to stand as an equal among her brothers. A fierce force in the making. Their journey is only beginning. Subscribe now to witness the rise of the dire wolves step by primal step. Yeah. So these are Romulus and Remus, uh, the two brothers that are already kind of grown up. Uh, they're teenagers now, you could say. And this is Khaleesi with little blue eyes. And this is Ben Lamb, the entrepreneur who is the CEO at Colossal. And he just he was just on a Joe Rogan podcast. I'm going to leave every link in the description so you guys can check that out. Um, this is uh, one of the male pups when he was a little bit bigger. And these are Romulus and Remus right now. That's how big they are right now. This is another shot. So this guy, Ben Lamb, and this is a, a strange connection that I just discovered when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He was talking about being part of the Explorers Club. And if you guys remember that, uh, the Explorers Club is something that Jake Barber also talked about. And I've been looking into this uh, group for a little while now. And I have managed to find people who are like CIA. They worked at NASA. Now this guy who's working with genetic manipulation. Uh, Jake Barber, who's part of Skywatcher. And they're all part of this club. Uh, unless there are more Explorers Club, different uh, and that I don't know about, it's the same club, I would think. And they seem to be involved in some of the most paradigm shifting, I don't know what to call them, plans for humans and for uh, the world that you can think of because there's already people complaining about what this guy just did and what he just announced. Um, people who are like creationists and they have like a really deep philosophical concern about what he is doing because think about it. We're talking about creating life itself because they're not technically, they're not bringing back the dire wolf per se. They're doing something new with dire wolf DNA. And that is what creationists have a problem with because they believe that God created everything and this goes directly against those beliefs. And it is an interesting debate to have because 
just think about it. This young, how young the species are right now, humans. And at this point in time, we can already do this. Uh, and we're like relatively primitive. We're still very um, tribalistic. We're still very violent. We're still engulfed in wars all around the world. We still have religious and philosophical difference that, differences that we can't really get past that easily. And we're already doing genetic tampering. We're already creating species through science. So this ties into the one of the most crackpot, you could call them, or wild out there theories of the NHI, uh, which is this whole talk about hybrids. And this ties directly into the Nazca beings because the Nazca beings, um, a, a lot of the lore that I've been hearing since I've been investigating this is that the place where the Nazca beings were discovered uh, has a word that is spoken in, in the language of the people from the Palpa and Nazca areas, the natives there. They didn't want to tell me the word itself, but they did tell me that this word they used to describe that place and that location translates to laboratory. So there's a lot of talk about this, that uh, uh, the reason that these uh, Nazca beings are so diverse between one another is because they were part of some kind of a lab where they were tampering with their DNA and creating different species. I don't know if that is true, but the fact that this guy, Ben Lamb, is already capable of doing what he's doing with these direwolves and other species, not just direwolves, invites me to think that those Nazca beings could have been part of something like that, but in the like distant past. And I would ask Ben uh, to potentially try to see if he can get DNA from these beings as well and see if something can be done to bring back one of those. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Um, we still haven't been able to fully confirm that the Nazca beings were part of some kind of uh, genetic experiment. It's one of the hypotheses, um, but I know and from a source that I know that is close to what's happening, that the Peruvian government is kind of getting ready to confirm the authenticity of the bodies over the next couple of months or so. So when that happens, there's a lot of stuff that are going to start happening uh, from other countries that obviously, if these beings are confirmed real, companies like this one from Ben Lam are definitely going to be interested in getting some of that DNA as well and see what they can do with it. And when that happens, things are going to get even crazier than they are right now. Ben right now uh, is working with uh, Woolly Mammoth DNA, Dodo DNA. He already created a really cute Woolly Mouse with like a golden kind of hair, which is kind of weird. I'm going to superimpose the picture as I talk to you guys so you can check it out. It's really cute. The first animal that they created like this was the woolly mouse. And they're like advancing rapidly with the other animal DNA. And just to keep you guys uh, relaxed a little bit and not like jump into any conclusions, this company is backed by the Humane Society, which has been around for a while and those guys are the ones that make sure that no uh, living form is hurt or killed during any of these types of experiments so they keep uh mr lamb and the colossal biosciences uh company uh on a tight leash you could say these little wolves are gonna grow up uh in in captivity sort of because they're going to be living they're already there and somewhere in the north of the us 
they have like a reservation that is like over 2000 square kilometers wide. So they're going to have plenty of space and they're going to live their uh, entire lives. And they're already like displaying some kind of hunting characteristics. So presumably they're going to give them uh, livestock so they can hunt there. If, the, if it's a reservation that is like already there, there's already animals there. So they haven't started hunting according to lamb yet, but if all goes well, these are going to change history. And they already did with this announcement. It's pretty wild, but I want to know from you, what do you think about this? Um, if you're a religious person, what's your first reaction to this? Do you agree with what they're doing? Do you think they're playing God as they, as they say, I am very excited personally, because this means that science is making progress. Um, there are obviously like big picture plans they have for this. Their plan is not to just bring the species back, but to uh, balance out the ecosystems where many of these species went extinct and reintroducing these species is aimed to help the ecosystem flourish again that's the main goal it's not just bringing back the species just for the sake of it you know they have a plan and i think it's wonderful but you may think differently especially if you have strong religious beliefs so i want to hear from you and what do you think about my idea of getting DNA from the Nazca beings? Do you think that would work? As soon as uh, these bodies are confirmed authentic by the Peruvian government, I think a lot of things are going to start happening. And this is linked to that, I believe. Just one more thing I want to show you, which is the Time Magazine cover. This is Remus. He's a direwolf, the first to exist in over 10,000 years endangered species could be changed forever and that's him he's pretty big there about six months old so let me know what you think about this i want to know everything if you like the content you see i'm gonna ask you to please like share comment subscribe hit the bell icon so you can get notified when new video drops if you want to support the channel in any other way there's a bunch of links in the description you can also become a member you can also support us on kgra Thank you for your support as always that's it for me today on this video but i'll be uh looking at the sky watcher video doing a reaction on it and i'm jumping in with james yandali Vinny from disclosure team and ryan from post disclosure world on a panel to talk about it it's going to be pre-recorded so i don't know when it's coming out but that's what i'm doing today just letting you guys know let me know what you think about this are humans now starting to play God? I guess that's the question people want to ask, right? I don't think so. I think it's just part of the evolution. The fact that we are like getting more accustomed to new science and this genetic stuff. It's just part of it. That's what I think. But what do you think? All right. That's all I got. Uh, thank you. And remember, stay curious stay inquisitive. I'll see you guys later. Bye.